Hey, thank you so much for being a part of our service today at Hardin Valley Church. We're excited. We have uh, been working our way through the book of Philippians, taking just a small pause, and we are talking about men being godly. And I hope you'll join us as you watch. Do us a favor, grab your Bible, make sure that you've got the app downloaded, hardenvalleychurch.com slash app that you're on our texting list, email list, that you're up to speed, able to stay engaged. Thanks for doing that. Continue to send us your prayer requests. Let us know how we can help be a blessing to you. Thanks for sharing the service. Now ask God to speak to your heart, quiet your soul, and then make sure that if, if God uses this message in your life, you share this with some others. Thanks so much for being a part of things today as we look at men behaving godly. Thanks again. Through all eternity 
Amen. Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Boy, so glad to see you today. And it is a, it is a great day to be in God's house. It's a pretty good day to be in air conditioning. And uh, so, but so good to see you. And I see each of you. Uh, many of you have commented that you really like to bow tie. I think it, I think it takes attention away from my baldness, and so I hope that it'll do that. And uh, but anyway, it is uh, it is good. I, I did accumulate a few. Some people got me some, and so we're trying to trying to do that. I know something's up when I get text message in the afternoon, not about the sermon, not about how God spoke to your heart, but going. I like that bow tie. Where'd you get that? And uh, so, so anyway, so we are the first church of the bow tie. And uh, but anyway, it is uh, it is uh, it is good. Uh, we wanted to again say thank you to everyone who's here again. If you are an honored guest, I look forward to meeting you in just a little bit. If I didn't already, and uh, thank you uh, so much for being for being here. We do have a good uh, video or two queued up. We'll share that with you. Uh, on social media and the website this afternoon, but we uh, have some a good report from uh, Shannon Little. Shannon's one of our missionaries um, in uh, in the city of Jap in uh, excuse me the country of Japan and and right outside of J Jap Japan City and anyway uh, right right through there and uh, teaches English and uh, and then ministers and just has a tremendous opportunity with what God has given to her and uh, and has embraced being a single missionary and so two cultures she uh, she uh, a few months ago when she was giving us a report she uh, <laughs> she did decided to do a driving video and I'm not exactly sure what possessed her to do that but she uh, she drove and uh, kept the camera on and left side of the road and did all this driving. And, uh, and, and I watched it, and then I watched it with you, and I had the same reaction both times. I'm going to throw up. Uh, you know. So anyway, so yesterday I said, who's our video? I said, Shannon. I said, she didn't send us another driving video, did she? Oh, my soul. Good gracious. Uh, you know, I've never... I preached, I preached some stuff and walked through some passages and seen people going, uh, that's, uh, 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 or get on a real serious subject, or even get in a real squirmy subject, you know, talk about men and women's relationships or parents raising their kids and everybody kind of, uh, but I've rarely ever seen 30, 40, 50 people going, Ugh. so, uh, so I sent word out, no more of these videos, man, so. So anyway, so I and uh, we're having, like I said, a little technical difficulties. We'll have that for you, and you can uh, check that out. And we'll try and make sure we push that, uh, push that to you. And again, we are thankful. We're thankful, thankful for you. Thankful for our uh, our men. We decided years back that on these really loaded emotional holidays, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, that we would instead honor our ladies. And we would honor our men because for many of us, these are just tricky days. Uh, we, would not, we would not negate the single moms who are wearing unbelievable amount of stress and hats or the men who are not fathers or the single dads. I, you know, we would not negate any of that. And so we just decided we would do a little differently and not let Hallmark uh, tell us and and, uh, but we would still honor moms. We'd still honor dads and stepmoms and stepdads. We'd do all of that, but we wouldn't take all our cues from Hallmark. Nod your head if you're with me here and, and not, not make you feel bad that you're doing the best you can in the circumstances you're in. I don't, I don't see any point in that. And, uh, and so uh, we, we decided, so to all our fellows today at the end of the service, we have a, a few things for it. We've got, we got homemade goodies. How many of you... How many, of you, how many of you like both of those words, homemade and goodies? Anybody? So we got homemade goodies. Uh, Miss Allison Holloman got in the kitchen in uh, four sticks of butter and whatnot later has got us some uh, packs of cookies. You, uh, and again, they need to go somewhere. Otherwise, they're going in the preacher's belly. And uh, so, so take those with you. 
And then we decided to kind of man it up a little bit. We're, we're, Mike, Mike, Mike Lawson, what, what did you tell me yesterday? I never have hex, uh, what did you say? Never have hex keys or what, what did you say? You never have the right one. And I think out of everything on the table, we still don't have the one that he needs. But anyway, so uh, but we got everything from uh, 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 pliers and hex keys and a little some tape measures. Grab one of those. And to all of you that are helping rear the next generation, we've got just a, a great book. It's a newer book, but it's a, it's real readable. Don't don't. It's a it's a little bit larger print. That's why it looks a little thicker. But but I'd encourage you to get that. Get it, if, you, if it's not applicable to you, you can give it to somebody. So we've got those things out there for you, and we want you to have them, and it's our way of saying uh, we love you and we're thankful for you, and that's uh, to all, all, our, all our fellas. And uh, so we hope that you, hope that you will enjoy, enjoy that, and so we want to do that. We've been working through Lamentations. Maybe as you came in, you grabbed a new card, but uh, one of the things we want to do as a Bible church is to learn the Bible, is to learn the Bible. And as we learn the Bible, then God's going to help us to live out the Bible. It's hard to, it's hard to think about the scriptures if you never put them in. Not your head if that kind of makes, kind of makes some sense. And we're not trying to do it as a nag. We're trying to do it as some great encouragement. And a lot of you, January, February, March, April, May, you've put in some of this and it's starting to come bubble back up. Others of you are going, you know, February was a little easier. And uh, some of you already told me, this is bad. This is, verses are bad and, uh, and tough to learn. But we're, we're going to walk through them. We're honoring God and His Word. If you're willing and able to stand with us, we're going to read them together as part of our scripture time this morning. We're in Lamentations, the preacher here, Lamentations 3, 21 through 24. You can look on the screen. You look in your tablet, your Bible. And, uh, or you can look on the card maybe you got as you came in or you've been using this month. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. How many of you are like, okay, that, that works pretty good because usually what I recall to mind is problems and trouble and bills and upset people. Anybody besides me? That's not always a happy thunderstorm in my mind. Verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. You ever run out of patience? You ever said one more time? You ever meant it? You ever had somebody say it to you and you looked at them and there wasn't a hint of any compassion or mercy on their face? I mean, if you're glad God's compassion is infinite. Somebody say amen. His mercies never run out. Verse 23 they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And every child of God ought to say amen. Verse 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. He will never run out. He will never mismanage his funds. He will never empty himself of what he has promised to us. His capacity is infinite and unlimited and we say, hey, we rejoice in the God who is greater than anything we can imagine. Lamentations 3, 21 through 24. You can be seated. Man, I'm excited about that. And again, as we uh, support our missions, our missionaries, as you do that, many of you enjoy uh, giving online, and we thank you for that. Continue that. If you know you're traveling this summer, again, I encourage you to set that up. You can set it in advance. You can set it to repeat. And we want to help you do that. We try and send out uh, quarterly updates, letting you know where you are. Some of you like to have a goal for giving for the year. So, so thank you for that. Those will be coming in a little while, and we'll get those, we'll get those uh, uh, to you. So thank you so much for that and what you're doing together. To all our junior age kids, our elementary squad, you can uh, head on toward the back there. And uh, so we appreciate that. Very good. And so we're thankful uh, for you. Um, <laughs> I'm just, it always, it always makes me feel good and bad how fast they run out. Yes, we are free, free from the adult service. And uh, they got their own songs and things like that. I don't mind the running, Roy, but I, 
I'm getting a little annoyed when they pump their fist in the air, you know, like Atticus, free, free, free. And uh, so that's a, whole, that's a whole movie. I just said how old I was, right? Those of you who got that, the rest of you can Google that and, uh, and uh, go from, uh, kind of go from there. So anyway, so good to see you. It is a day, and we're just really, I said it in the intro a minute ago, just I want to hit pause. I normally don't, I almost don't change things for the calendar unless we're November, December. I just, I just don't. Um, but, but I, I wanted to, I, I, two weeks ago, I knew, I mean, I, I need to, I need to, I need to preach here and, uh, and, and we, we want to visit some of these things in time to come because we, we all need help in this area. And I'm not preaching at, at, uh, fathers today, really not, but I do want to, I do want to zero in on a few things that'll help us, whether, whether you're a guy or a gal, whether you're a man or a woman, uh, whether you're a new believer, whether you're still debating whether or not to be a Christ follower, whether you've been a Christ follower for a long time, I do want to help us, and I think I can today, and maybe speak in such a way that's not only an encouragement, but that will, uh, that will, in, that will build you up and maybe do a little bit of correction as well. As well. Proverbs chapter 20 in verse number 6, Proverbs 26, we're going to read just one verse, then we'll spend the rest of our time in Psalm 112. Proverbs 20, verse 6. Let me just ask you very quickly, how many of you would love to leave today with some help? Anybody besides me? How many of you would love to leave today with some help? Nod, wink. How many of you How many of you'd love to leave today going, okay, everybody else is kind of struggling like I am, and we're going to struggle forward together. I, I, think, I think those would be a great thing, wouldn't they? And so we want to do that. I want to give you some help today. Proverbs 26, we stood just a second ago for the, for the last time in, the ser- in this part of the service. Just stand with me one more time as we read God's Word together. We honor God in His Word. If you want to follow along, that's hardenvalleychurch.com slash app, A-P-P, iOS or Android, and just click on the sermon notes and you can follow along. And there's a Bible provided there as well. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Help me with the last part but a faithful man who can find. One more time, but a faithful man who can find. You can't hire them, all you that are middle management employers, right? You can't count on them on Monday because they're hungover, right? You can't count on them to keep their marriage vows. It seems like, I mean, you can't count, I mean, you, you can't, is, is there any struggle? If there's anybody gets you engaged or gets you married and they go, if you get a good one, keep a hold of them, right? Because you can't find good men. We, we've made it a joke in our society, but it predates 3,000 years. A faithful man, a trustworthy man, who, who can find? Now, just for fun, how many of you, how many of you want to be? You want to be a faithful man. You want to encourage a faithful man. You want to support a faithful man. You, you want to, whether it's a nephew or a son, whether it's a husband or a friend, you, you want to do that. You want to do that. Now, let me just ask that second question. How many of you, I got, a, I got a mile or two to go before I can be what I want to be? Anybody besides the preacher? Anybody besides Rodney? Okay. Psalm 112. If that's your heart and that's your case, then read with me in Psalm 112. We'll read these 10 verses. Then we'll sit down and I'll read them to you. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord that delights greatly in his commandments. That's our two prongs this morning. Verse 2. His children, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house. His righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there rises light in the darkness. He is gracious, full of compassion and righteous. A good man, he's again going back to verse 1, shows favor, lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he won't be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings, bad news. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He won't be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Not everybody loves him. Verse 9, he is dispersed. He is given to the poor. He is compassionate. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. He will outlast his detractors and those who are not living right. What is it? 
what do we want to do? I, I want to encourage, I, instead of men behaving badly this morning, I, I want to encourage for men to behave godly. For men to behave godly. Would you pray that with me? Father, from front to back and left to right, speak to hearts. Help me preach your word with power and authority, Lord. May I communicate clearly. May I enunciate well. But more than that, would you preach on the inside? And Father, help us. Help me. Lord, I, I needed these reminders. You have worked on my heart. And I, I pray I would encourage us. Lord, it's not, it's not enough to admit we're not there, Lord. It's, it's, it's enough to say with every breath, I want to please you. With every breath, I want to impact the next generation. With every breath. So God, turn our desires to you. Turn our hearts toward home and help us. Whether we find ourselves single or parents or single again or, or wherever we are in life that we would, we would grab hold of this. And Lord, these principles are applicable across the board, so help us. God, I love you and I need you. Speak to our hearts this morning, I pray in Jesus' precious name. And amen. You can be seated. I don't know how old I was. It's been a day or two ago. And, and I, I somehow got in the middle, I somehow got in the middle of some feisty folks. Anybody ever been around any feisty people? Anybody? Just me? One or two of you. I got around some feisty people. And, uh, and, 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 I, and I was certain I had all the answers. You ever, anybody remember that age where you knew everything? Anybody? Just me? And, uh, and I was certain. And I was around these really fired up feisty people. And, uh, and, and, and I thought they were trying to talk about some, some financial issues. I, I don't know. I don't know why I believed them, but anyway, they, they had all kind of things uh, going on. Thank you, guys. They had all kind of things going on, and, and, and they were hot to trot and feisty and fiery, and I was like, okay. And I said, well, what do you think would solve your financial problem? And this was the first time I'd ever heard it. I didn't even know it was a joke. I thought the woman made it up on the spot, and I thought she was, uh, I thought it was really good, but I recently found out, or found out later it wasn't. But anyway, she said, well we could sell my husband for what he thinks he's worth we could solve all our financial problems and I in the middle of this really you can laugh it's funny in the middle of this really tense situation I went <laughs> and of course you don't take sides when you're counseling and all of a sudden I lost him it endeared her and instead of her calming down, she got madder. And so anyway, so it was a very unproductive counseling time because uh, I got so tickled. And uh, so, and we're there. But I've found out that's not original, wasn't original with her. And I've heard it through the years. I've heard it on TV, I suppose. And I've heard it close quarters. Uh, it's occasionally awkward when you're sitting there with somebody and go, well, if we could sell my man for what he thinks he's worth. And I'm like, uh, you know, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh you know, kind of a thing, and we're there. Any, any woman, in, any, any lady in here be honest enough to go, yeah, yeah, that's, I've had that thought before. Anybody, just a few of you, <laughs> somebody like, I ain't going to raise my hand, but here's a finger, and, uh, and you hear, man, it's that, and any man in here had that thought too? I'm so full of baloney. I'm so full of hot air. Oh, my gracious, man, because uh, we, we're, we're there, aren't we? We, we, struggle. We are given to our worst impulses. And we, uh, we typically, and again, just borrowing on the riff from culture here, instead of men behaving godly, we are too many times men behaving badly and ladies behaving badly. We come to Psalm 112. We, we echo the Proverbs. We come to Psalm 112 and we go, man alive, we, well, we, need, we need some faithful people. We need some people who love God. We need some people who want to love God. Somebody say amen to that. We want to be that way. We want to be that way. Steve Farrar, and I'll quote some from his book. He's got a great little book um, called Point Man. He's got a, a few books and all. He says, he reminds us that the men of our world need a wake-up call. We, we need to be godly men. Your spouses need you to be a godly man. Let me help you. Your future spouses need you to be a godly man. Ain't nothing about putting 
a gold band on your finger turns you into a godly man. Man, if anything else, man, you are just becoming today. You are more today who you will be in the future. And your decisions today, your future spouse and your spouse needs you. Your children or children to be. Your nieces and nephews need to be a, you to be a godly man. Your church needs you to be a godly man. An unfaithful man is like a, is like a tooth out of joint. It's like a broken bone when you can't count on somebody. And your church needs you to do that. Your business needs you to be a godly man. Three out of four small businesses fail, and part of that reason is because of employee theft. And there's cameras in a whole cottage industry doing nothing but monitoring people you have given keys and codes to to keep them from robbing you blind. Your business needs you to be godly. Your community, your nation needs you to be a godly man. I like politics. I like lots of things. But we need less of some of that, and we need more of just old-fashioned, if you allow, godly men. If our families are going to survive, they need men who say, I will follow Christ. There's a saying, as a family goes, so goes society. Farrar says, let me add to that and complete it. As men go so many times, goes the family. It's so bad in our world, we've created a whole version of things we talk about breaking the cycle and breaking the chain. The poor men and dads who don't ever read their Bible and never took anybody to church and absentee dads and uncles and grandparents and whoever you want to be. And you have men who will stand up and say, I'm the first one to do this and I made a commitment. I wasn't going to be like that. If you want to, if you want to see this worked out, you sometimes find online Dennis Rodman, and he's accepting the award to go in the NBA Hall of Fame, and he turns it into about 20 minutes of saying, talking about how terrible a father his dad was and the impact it had on his life. And his dad fathered over 30 children by who knows how many women and never had anything to do with them and wouldn't even show up when he's accepted to the highest award in his industry. And there's a man who's multimillionaire and broken on the stage. But we need some men who love God. We want to be some men who love God. We say that's fine, you know, if you're wired that way. If you're wired that way, if you're just, you know, if you like these kind of things, I'd rather do other stuff. I, 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 I hear you, but, but the evidence doesn't let you off the hook here. You're in Psalm 112, and we're talking about David. We're talking about King David. King David's a man's man. It's King David, five smooth stones, and the sling that he's gotten accomplished at using. He's a man's man. He took care of Goliath under the spirit and the power of the Lord as a teenager. Say, I can't do anything for Jesus. David's out killing giants before he turns 20. If I understand the Hebrew, he's somewhere between 13 and 18. That's big britches he's wearing before he ever turns 20 years of age. I think you can do great things for God, no matter how old you are. Amen? He's a man's man in that sense. Excuse me. He's a family man. He's a family man. He's a wife, and he's got kids, and he's involved, and he's interested. Again, I don't think you've got to be married to be a godly man. I, I don't remotely think that. I think you serve God in the state you find yourself in, and I think you prepare for whatever God has for you next, but you're concerned and you care and you do those things. Dad passed away 23 years ago. Couple, uh, anniversary was a couple weeks ago, and, and as a thought, and I ruminated again, and I was reminded what I thought to myself, and this was before cell phones and all. Man, I, we, Dad and I hadn't spoke. For any length of time, Dad hate to talk on the phone. I mean, NASCAR pit crew kind of get you off the phone when you called him. Anybody know any people like that? Oh, my soul. Hey, Dad, how you doing? Good, good, man. It's good to hear from you. I'll talk to you soon. Whoa, whoa, Dad. Uh, you know, he's just a uh, man, you know, kind of thing. It's like I called him collect. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I'm paying for this one. It's okay, Dad. And uh, and I and I just man, I made up my mind. I'm not, I'm not going two or three weeks in between talking to my mom. And, and I have to be real careful because she watches these services now. But even though we talk about the weather occasionally, wink, wink, and uh, Keith, you'll cut this out of the video. <laughs> I, I'm going to talk to her. 
I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to talk to her because I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, if, if, if she passes for I'm not, I'm not standing over another grave going, boy, I wish I'd talked to him more than I did. I'm not, I'm not doing it. 23 years, I, I don't go very long. Don't talk long sometimes. Don't learn anything new other than who's died and how hot or cold it is. But, but we're going we're to do it. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm committed to that. I want to do that. He's a family man. He was a man's man. He was a, he was a warrior. Excuse me. He was a spiritual man. The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. He was a leader in temple worship. Is there anything any better? Is there anything better to you ladies than hearing men with all the gusto in their, in their bodies singing praise to our God? Man, I love it. Man, it thrills my soul. Every now and then we've been a part of a church that would have a men's chorale every so often. And you'd see men who somehow got hoodwinked into being on stage. And they're trembling and they're unhappy. But man, they're just letting it go and giving God the honor and the glory. Is there anything that excites us any more than seeing men with their Bible or their tablet or whatever out and they're following along and they're taking notes and they're doing that. He was a businessman. He was shrewd in business. He could relate to everybody in this room. And under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, he says, verse 1, Blessed, praise you the Lord. Blessed is a man, two things, fears the Lord that delights greatly in his commandments. He fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments. Farrar says, if we, if men would behave God, we'd change the world. We change the world. See, when a man truly fears God and loves his word, he's going to be productive. He's going to be successful. He's going to be given to godliness. And these two things that are wrapped up in this verse here, man, they speak to our hearts, don't they? Man, I want to view God the right way, and I want to love and follow what God has said to me. I like simple. Man, I like simple. I love simple. The more complicated something is, the more Tylenol I have to take. Nod your head if you're wired like I am. Eh? I used to love puzzles. Now I love solutions. I'm doing something for somebody now, and he's like, I need you to watch these six videos. I said, can you just give me the notes? Well, there's fill in the blank. I said, is there an answer key? No. I said, I don't like you anymore. I don't want to do this. I mean, give me the answer key, and I'll still watch them, but you know, live, you know, and all these kind of things. It'll be fun. It's fun for you. You wrote the thing. It's not fun for me. I don't know what you're doing. Anybody, anybody get cranky like that besides me? And, uh, you know, and, and we're here. I love this. He lays out these two things. So let me, let me pause. Let me ask you a question. Let me pause and ask you a question. Anybody here want to be this kind of person? I want to know these kind of people? You want to date these kind of people? You want to love on these kind of people? You want to raise these kind of people? as children to adults and, and, and influence them. He says, this. So, so why should I care about this? Because of what he does there. He says, you, these two things are priority. Look what happens. He gives them a promise about children. You still with me? Anybody still with me? Look, look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. He gives a promise about the children. His seed will be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. The guy that fears God and delights greatly in his commandments, loves his word and obeys his word, Man, here's this great promise. There's a promise about his character. Verse 3 and 4. Wealth and riches are in his house. His righteousness endures forever. And the upright there rise light in the darkness. He's gracious, full of companion, compassion and righteousness. He's not scared of the man in the mirror. When he does that, he, he's not worried. Anybody can look as close as they want to. And there's integrity that is there. About his conduct, verse 5. Good man shows favor, lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. He's got integrity of life. It affects his business, his conduct with the public. About his confidence, again, look at verse 6. He won't be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil or bad tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. He has an anchor that goes beyond a bank account or his Vanguard index fund. He has, he has confidence in the Almighty God and he knows who he is. There's about his charity. Verse 9. He's dispersed. He's given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Sometimes people get business successful and they all of a sudden get real stingy. And they tend to hoard. They tend to keep up. 
Man, when you love the Lord, you want to, hey, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's, man, let's, let's help the other. Let's be a blessing to those. And they figure out what Dave Ramsey said. There is no fun like giving away fun. There's no fun like being extravagant, generous in your giving and his charity. He's commended, verse 6 again, in verse 9. Surely he shall not be moved. The righteous shall be an everlasting remembrance. He is thought well of by others. And if you want to be this kind of man, if you want to know these kind of people and encourage these kind of people, I want to offer you just a few ideas. Can I do that this morning from this text? Can I do that? That'd be okay. Number one, and these are A, B, C, D. How you like that? You said, I thought, your, I thought pastor was smart. That's how smart I am, A, B, C, and D. Here we go. This is, this is where we go. So we're like, thank God. This is good. It's going to be simple. Number one, I want you to acknowledge the power of your influence. You matter to others. You matter to others. Read back through the text. He talks about his children. He talks about his conduct in business with others. He talks about how he is to be remembered. Understand, you influence people in your life. Say, I'm a, I'm a hermit. I'm a whatever. I doubt that, number one, very seriously. Number two, I, I, believe, you misunder, I believe you misunderestimate. I just quoted George W. Bush. I believe you underestimate and misunderstand. There we go. What God has put in your path. I wrote it down, Phoenix. I wrote it down the day you did it. I've kept it. I've kept that thought as part of my, what I do uh, almost daily. Midweek service. We paused. We started praying for people we knew were unchurched or we weren't sure that they were saved. And Phoenix took out a half sheet of paper and he flipped it over. I said, I said what are you doing, man? He said, he said, well, I got to 46. I said, you got to 46 what? He said, I laid, I laid down, I wrote down, laid down, I wrote down 46 people and I don't know if they know Christ, and I'm almost certain they're unchurched. I said, well, that makes you a missionary. Makes all of us a missionary. Other people stopped at 15 or 20. God's, God's given you influence in your life. He's given you influence in your life. He's given you influence in your family. If you're, a, if you're married today or about married or wish you were married, and if you wish you weren't married, that's a different sermon. Uh, but it, wherever you find yourself, man, you, 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 have, you have influence there. You have influence with your spouse. Let me say it again. I keep saying it. I don't, I don't mean to belabor it. But there's nothing about a wedding ceremony and a wedding ring that turns you into a good man. It's just not. You are today becoming who you will be. Man, say, I want to do this. I want to do that. Man, you start right now. You start right now. Man, be who you ought to be. I'm, I'm content and convinced that one day God's going to look at us, some of us, and go, why did you give your best effort at work? And you came home and gave everybody else what's left. When you would go crazy and go the extra mile, and you'd come home, slump down in a chair, and grab the wand of power. That's what we call the remote at our house. Grab the wand of power and try and tune everybody out that you said originally you would die for. How many of you think we miss... We misappropriate our influence that way. Amen. We ought to give the best at the house and we ought to give whatever's left over at the job. Now, by the way, I think you ought to do your best both places. Amen. But if you're going to shave one and not the other, man, I think you shave off the people, the people that you're not kin to and the people that God put under your roof, man. You love on them and you give them your very best. Somebody say amen to that, please. But we are tempted to do the other. I'm not saying you're never tired. I'm not saying you never have bad. I'm not. I'm not. Anybody, anybody in this room knows that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about consistently. I mean, it's just what I want. Acknowledge that. Acknowledge the fact. Acknowledge the fact that, that God has given you a powerful influence in your spouse's life. You get the opportunity to lead, to lead out front. You get the opportunity to be the consoler and the responder. You get the opportunity to love and to pray for that woman that's in your life. Let me help you. If you're thinking about getting married or remarried or if, if wherever you are, man, they pray for you. You ever heard them pray for you? Years and years we work with college students. <laughs> Guy be on his second date. Brandon knows this to be true. Guy be on his second date. He wanting to grab this girl's hand, 
and pray for. And I'd find out about it, and I'd go, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm trying to lead her. I said, man, you, you, need, to be, you need to be engaged, man. You, you're doing that, you're doing that, and you're going, man, I'm, I'm showing her that I'm real spiritual. You're doing that to that young lady, and she's going, my heart, my heart, my heart. Here you go. My heart, my heart. You, you can't make your bed. Man, you, can't, you hadn't seen the floor mats in your car in about three months. You don't even know what the color of your carpet is. You, you got cups in the back seat, man, that are breeding the cure for cancer and growing the cure for all these diseases. But you're being real spiritual and holding her hand. She's ready to give her heart away, and you don't know where your toothpaste is. Stop doing that. Should I give an invitation now, apparently? <laughs> Stop doing that. But when you put the ring on her finger, when you're ready to get married and all, you let her in on what you've been doing privately, praying. It's hard to fuss and fight when you pray with one another. It's hard to fuss and fight when you sit down at the table and you look at your wife's notepad and she's got your name at the top for a few reasons. It's hard to fuss and to fight. By the way, it's hard to walk with God and be completely put out with your spouse. <laughs> ask, ask me if I've tried occasionally. Man, acknowledge the power of your influence. Acknowledge the power of your influence with your nieces, your nephews, with your stepsons and stepdaughters, and with your sons, your daughters. Acknowledge your influence. Jeff Ward told me a story this week. He's up in Bristol with his dad. Jeff Ward said, said, God never blesses with any kids. He said, but I got a niece and nephew. He said, my nephew really wanted to do something, and he asked me, and he'd been told no. I said, look, man, if God's put this in your heart, man, you, you need to chase this dream and, and, and do this kind of thing. And his nephew, nephew said that was the encouragement he needed. He packed up everything, loads up the truck, moves to Nashville, Tennessee, Gets the interview, gets everything. Next thing you know, his dream job, he's working for Ramsey Group and uh, whatever it's called. And, and he's there. And he time he tells a story, credits his uncle. And don't, don't, don't miss the power that you have of influence. Someone said if the wife is the thermometer, she knows if things are hot or cold and how things are running, then the dad gets to be the thermostat. You notice you come home, you're mad and angry and ill and sullen. Everybody else is mad and angry and ill and sullen. If you come home, man, everything's okay. Or you come home and say, I'm going to need a few minutes. Everybody at work drank the same jar stupid. <laughs> I'm going to need a minute. Everybody goes, okay. Henry Cloud said, and uh, I... Last, the last word in the title is emotions. He said the heart of every 35-year-old young man and young lady has either been crushed or kept whole by how dad treated them or didn't treat them when they were six years old. Now I hope he's wrong. And some of you have broken the chains of all that stuff. And God has given you his grace. And God continues to give us his grace. Acknowledge the power of your influence. Acknowledge the power of your influence. Don't miss it. William Raspberry, I think, I think Mr. Raspberry passed not long ago. I tried to look that up again, and I, and I, I went down a rabbit hole some of his quotes. He was not anything what we call a conservative in that sense, but an excellent writer and when it came to what was going on in his beloved African-American community in the U.S., he was unbelievably relentless, whether it was the, the rap culture or, or any of those kind of things or the, or the, the complete objectification in and, and the, and the unbelievably atrocious way women were represented in the videos and the, rap, and, the, and the music videos and those kind of things. He wrote for years and years for the Washington Post and, he said, if I could offer you a single prescription for the survival of America, it would be restore the famine. If you asked me how to do it, I would start with save the boys. Save the boys. 
I don't know Mr. Asbury knew the Lord, but Mr. Asbury is absolutely right. Understand the power. Acknowledge the power of your influence. Acknowledge the power of your influence. See, what does it mean? See, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Back in verse 1 again. You still with me? Go back in verse 1. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. If you were going to compile it down, and some of you that have been around church or, or, or maybe grew up with Sunday school in your past or a group or something like that, you've heard everything from reverential trust and all those kind of things. None of that is wrong. But if you boil it down, you, you almost get three little ideas here. If you survey Old Testament and you add in the New most of the time in the Old Testament, if you saw fear of the Lord, it would be in our modern vernacular putting your faith in the Lord. It was just a descriptor. Someone fears the Lord means they put their faith and their trust in the Lord. They're a follower of Jehovah. They're a follower, we would say, of Jesus Christ. And so it was just kind of used as an, as an adjective, as a descriptor. Many, many times in here, it's, it's a statement of piety. It's a statement of what they do. So what do you mean? It's the idea of the act of worshiping and obeying Jehovah. Deuteronomy 5.29, God talking to Moses. He says, oh, that the people would fear him so that they can obey him. Fear can be expressed as a positive. That's obedience out of reverence. Or a negative obedience caused by the threat of divine punishment. In English, we say it, excuse me, in our southern vernacular, we say it like this. I do that, but, and you fill in the blank. Mom, dad, stepmom, stepdad, grandma, grandpa would kill me. Anybody ever made that statement or had that thought? I do that. I'd try that. I might do that, but I'm not going to do that. Again, I told the story a few weeks ago. I was going to the doctor's office. I was holding the door for the lady. She said, no, thank you. And I went, okie dokie, and, uh, and I said, no, I, I got it. She said, it's fine. I don't need a man to hold the door for me. I said, I didn't think he did, but somewhere in North Carolina, my mother knows if I didn't do that, and she'll call me and get on me. And she said, that's not, that's not so. I went, okay, and, uh, you know, and just stood there like a dummy holding the door while three other people walked in. And, uh, and, and, and here we go, saying that was, that was rude on her part. Maybe so, but, I, but the thing I was concerned about wasn't the lady. I'm concerned about the fact my mom knows. She knows across the miles. She, she, knows, she knows these kind of things, knows these kind of things. I'm convinced my wife knows any time I make a funny joke about her that's not exactly true, not in her present. I think her ears pick up because in 30 seconds I have a text message, how are you doing? Feeling guilty, how are you? And, uh, you know. Acknowledge the power of your influence. Fear God. We say it like that. I'm going to do this. I don't want to invite God's displeasure, but I want to please Him. And the good days in my life, I'm more interested in the other. This pleased God. This pleased Him. Sometimes it's just simply to describe you as a worshiper, as a worshiper of Jehovah. Secondly, beware of the pitfalls. A, acknowledge. B, beware of the pitfalls. Beware of the pitfalls. Can I rat a tat tat a few of these at you? Can I do that? Beware of these pitfalls. Again, I'm, I'm taking it's such a good little book here, t taken from Farrar's book here. Farrar says men, <coughs> men struggle with these. He struggle with these. Men struggle with being arrogant. Someone said that the best descriptor of a man, not puppy dog snails and all those kind of things, said men are 90% ego wrapped in human flesh. Women's and finally, ego. We struggle being arrogant. We struggle with pride. Some of us don't struggle. We're just straight up arrogant. We struggle being autocratic. It, it nothing, nothing about being a man makes me right all the time. I don't care what it comes across on TV. Truth of the matter is, I figured out. When Andre and I are, on the same, are not on the same page, I'm better off to wait a minute. There have been two huge decisions in our life. We've not been on the same page. One unbelievably bit me. Now, I didn't say there have been other decisions we were on the same page, but a huge one. And I learned my lesson. She was listening to God a little closer than I was. 
But the second one, I was unbelievably convinced this is what God wants to do. It wasn't ego, it wasn't pride. And she wasn't there. She wasn't with me. But she said, I, I trust you. And we'd, we'd been here about six months. She, she said we, we made the right decision. And what she didn't know is I'd been sweating for six months. Because I'm like, man, we, we do this together. God gave you to me, gave me to you. I, I want to do life together and, and, and want to do these kind of things. So that doesn't make you much of a man. doesn't make you much of a man. But God said he gets a wife, gets a good thing. God said make a help meet for us. God said to honor and love and respect one another. I don't, I don't know what exactly gets in everybody's head. Man, I'm not, to, I'm not to do life together and we pray together and God leads us both together. I don't understand that kind of a thinking and thought. I don't understand that paternalism or that patristic kind of a bully. I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that all the time. Say, but, but, but I, I, circumstances are different. I'm not, I'm not saying in all occasions and all. Somebody's sitting there going right now, but if I listen to my wife, we'd be homeless because she's terrible with this. I didn't say in every circumstance, God's given both of us individual strengths and weaknesses and, and, and humble people acknowledge that with one another. Nod your head if you get that. But we got influence, we got power, but beware the pitfalls of autocracy and arrogance. Beware the pitfalls of being absent. You can come home every night and you can sleep in the same bed and you can be checked out. Be there. Be there. I love it. Some of you that travel, some of you that are watching now that are trying, I love it, man. You make sure you FaceTime or, or, or Team Zoom or whatever you do, Team Meet, no, you, you make sure you're there. You're part of things. Thank you for doing that, man. Don't be absent. Don't be absent. Part of my story, the rest of my days, as long as God gives me life, is how few weeks in August and September, a little while ago, I had to go. I will never see him graduate. I will never see Riley drive. I will never see, I will never walk Allison down the aisle and I usually make it funny and I go and I will never try and explain women to my son. And I've just got Andrea how I want her and she's gonna marry somebody else with my life insurance. And I had to have three funerals and I had to, I had to mortgage everything that I'd look forward to because I had to get my mind ready to fight. And I couldn't sit there and grieve the whole time. I had to get my grieving out of the way and get my fighting, mask, fighting face on and, and go forward. Wait for it. God in his mercy has let me see them both graduate. And God in his mercy let me see everybody get a license. And I still haven't explained women to the boy. And as far as I know, Andrea doesn't have a contract out on me. Wait for it. Look, look right here. See? I don't plan to be absent. I don't, I wasn't trying to be before. I don't want to be. I want to be there. I want to be a part of things. Don't be abusive. That's obvious. One of the things our mayor kind of spearheaded it here in the area, but one of the things that those who watch and those who counsel were fearful of, particularly during the quarantine days, is that children had no respite and were locked up, as it were, with people without their best interest at heart. Don't do that. Don't be aloof. Don't be standoffish. Don't be standoffish. The older I get, the less I put up with people calling their wives and their husbands stupid and dumb and names like that. I want to just blame it on the drugs and just whack them in the head. Anybody go bail me out if I did that? I mean, what are you doing? You married that person. You love that person. You scold and get on your, your, your kids and you cuss at them and you swear at them. I just want to, I just, again, I just want to, you know, use a, 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 a 
high school principal, famous in the 70s, and they made a movie of his life called Walking Tall, and he walked around with a baseball bat. I think, man, that's what I need. I need my Louisville slugger just walking around going, yeah, let me hear you, let me hear you call him an F-bomb one more time. Let me just do that. Come over here. Come over here in Jesus' name, whap. And, uh, and I baptize you with the baseball bat. I mean, if you, I mean, like, that'd be entertaining, unless it was you, right? Yeah. Don't be that way. Don't be that way. There's a third thing there. There's a third thing. Consecrate the priorities of your life. Let me offer them to you. If you don't know, first priority in your life ought to be your relationship with God. Amen? Not the last relationship. Not the tack on thing. Not the once a month come to church thing. Man, it ought to be God. It ought to be secondly. It ought to be your family. You see it labeled out here. Before he talks about his kids, it's his relationship with God. Before it's his public success. Make sure that you understand what's important in your life. Most people figure this out when they're filled with regret. I'm encouraging you now when you are filled with opportunity. I think somewhere in the modern day psyche in 2021, we've got to get back to that God's house and God's work and God's people and God's mission becomes priority again in our lives. It should be your relationship with God, your family relationship. There is to be a church relationship that is there. Casual Christianity is killing us in North America. It is slaughtering and destroying us. They're estimating anywhere from 20 to 35 percent of churches that were in existence in 2019 will be closed by the end of 2022. That isn't a lack of lost people. It isn't a lack of facility. Let me help you. It really isn't a lack of funding. It is a lack of people say, this is not important anymore. I don't think it's ever been more important to be the people of God with the Word of God, taking the message of God and inviting people to experience the love and the gospel, the love and the hope of God again. Be faithful there in work. I think the priority of your life, I think you ought to be the best employee ever. Most of the time, we invert that. I'm going to give everything I got there to people that don't exactly matter and give everybody else leftovers. Then devote yourself. I'm done. Devote yourself to the place of your priorities. Devote yourself to the place of your priorities. I will do this. I can be counted on. I will be what I ought to be. See, so what's the place of my priorities? That's where the people I love are. I think you start there. And the people who need. The people that I love and the people that, I, the people that are in need. Kind of what David does. Verse 1, blesses the one who fears the Lord, that lights greatly in his commandments. And you can't do that if you're not in his word. Jonathan said this in, in, in one of our groups on Thursday. He said, it's amazing the more time I spend in God's Word, He's just chipping away at things in my life. You found that to be true? He's knocking this off. He's doing this. Sometimes it's a hammer and a chisel. Other times it's a jackhammer. So, some, sometimes it's 200 grit. Sometimes it's 2,400 grit. Sandwich. He's doing those things. And if you're out of touch with the Word of God, then you're not going to be interested in following the commandments of God. I can guarantee you. We are to do those things. Man, I want to be that kind of man. There are things I got to be aware of. And there are things I want to do. Make sure that you're devoting yourself to the place of your responsibilities. It's the caricature of 2021 of modern life. The dad's a simpleton, and he's aloof, and he's ignorant. And all mom does and all the lady does is clean up all the dad's messes. I used to think that's just Hollywood showing their reprehension for, for men and for dads. And I've started to wonder lately, is that this not the mirror of society? Mom's dragging the kids to church. Mom's doing this. So for all you guys that are trying all you men who are wanting to be what God wants you to be. For all of you who are taking those steps and say, I want to, I want to be godly. I want to live in a way that pleases God. I want you to know 
man, I'm with you, and I'm proud of you, and I'm praying for you, and I'm encouraging you. And if you hadn't done what you wanted to do lately, then I want to encourage you, man, take the next step. Maybe you just want to bow your head and pray now. Again, we've been praying for our kids' spouses since the time they were born, if not even before. Man, pray for what's ahead. Pray that God would help you and would direct you. Pray that God would use you. And if you're a little later in life and you're in a different season of life, man, would you pray for those that are around you, understand the power of your influence, and would you lead out front? And I think leading out front for most of us is leading on our knees with an open Bible and a raised hand to heaven and going, God, help me. Because I don't want to be a man who behaves badly. I want to be a man who behaves godly. And that doesn't happen just in public. This whole battle is fought in private. It just shows up in public.